Delta 2 Zero Whiskey, contact Denver Center 132.7. Good day. 132.7, Zero Whiskey. Every day. All right. So, yeah, guys. Uh, good to have you back. Well, uh, we're traveling from Higginsville. So my plans got hampered because of the uh, frustrating issues that sometimes come up when you own an airplane. But, you know, issues and frustrations are not just limited to airplanes. Let's make that clear. But, uh, but definitely, owning an airplane, you know, I make a lot of videos, and boy, you see me uh, having a good old time and enjoying the freedom of aviation and flying this, these beautiful skies. But, three six two zero whiskey rooting into Centennial when you're ready, copy. Two zero whiskey, uh, ready to copy. Three six two zero whiskey, your clear direct to Quail, Quebec Uniform Alpha India Lima, then direct Centennial. Right, Jack. Clear direct Quail, and then direct Centennial. Three six two zero whiskey. There you go. All right, so we were given uh, new directions. So one guy just changed it, and another guy changed it again. One guy said I could go direct. I'm going to call him back and say, you lied to me, man. Why you lied to me? You lied to me? You never lied to Raul, okay, man? That made me mad, man. You don't lie to me. Never, ever, ever lied to me. Speaking of lying, that's what these guys are doing that are maintaining my airplane. Just lying back and forth. When I get to Denver, boy, I'm going to straighten this mess out. I'm pretty pissed off about that because they, they keep telling me, uh, they told me the part was ready and now they're saying, no, it's not ready. But anyway, that's the frustration. Part of the frustration is not just that the airplane's not ready and that they have, you know, they just keep giving me the runaround. But the other, uh, but the main frustration too is that, uh, that I had planned to go to Kentucky on this last trip, stay about three weeks so that I can work on my uh, shop, to get that shop going. Uh, right now, I need to do the walls. Following us. That's a lot of boards, son. Yeah. And I wanted to hook up an AC and, and get it all ready, get it all ready for my machines and, and, and to, to make the studio. So I was gonna do the electricity, it's going to do the floor, the walls, and the ceiling. And then my plan was to move all my machines in there. But because of this crap, I left the Saratoga with them because I was trying to get it back over here to Centennial. But weather got the best of me. So, uh, you know, I could have done a ferry permit had it expired on the annual, but... I called Charlie and he said that that was just going to kind of be a pain in the butt because I'd have to have a mechanic over here in Kentucky do it and yada, 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 blah, 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 blah. That's all I heard. Just frustrating. So it wrecked my plans, man. But hopefully uh, on this next trip, I'll have to bring back the Cherokee 6 and then I could focus on, uh, on the building. But, man, this freaking stuff with... Uh, this annual wrecked my plans, man. I swear, it, it, it's it's just aggravating. That's what's so aggravating about aviation, man. When you when you try to count on your airplanes and then they're not going to be available for use. I mean, I use my airplanes a lot, and I depend on them. So uh, now I'm going to have two in under annual because the Saratoga is supposed to be done now. But it's still on the annual because we're waiting on that part. Now I'm taking this one on the annual. So my goodness gracious, man. Uh, I'm going to have two airplanes and I can't use none. So hopefully this annual will go by smoother. And Charlie knows uh, this, uh, my mechanic. He knows this airplane inside and out. So, But you'll never know, man, because uh, safety is number one. So they got to make sure that they comb through this uh, airplane. And they, there's a procedure that they follow. And the hope is that uh, when you do your maintenance and you do your annuals, the hope is that you catch 
you know, issues before they actually become a major issue. So that's the thing. We have two hours remaining, two hours and four minutes, man. That's pretty cool. And let me show you guys how far we've traveled. So we've traveled all this way, all the way from Eastern Kentucky, all the way to Centennial. And I tell you, like I said, there are some frustrating parts about aviation, like I said, um, such as maintenance, repairs, and annuals, and, you know, things of that nature. But I got to say that the rewards, at least in my case, man, they outweigh the frustrations. With the frustrations, you deal with that occasionally. But with the re rewards, I mean, I don't see myself living without these airplanes. Like, life would just not be the same. So aviation uh, has definitely changed my perspective in life. It changed a lot of things about how I conduct life, for that matter. It just made life more adventurous. You know, like, really adventurous. You look forward to doing things, and you may feel that you may not be able to afford an airplane, and I mean, you know, of course, I mean, if, I mean, I, I guess it's not for everybody, right? But at least for me, I've always had a vision and a dream since I was very young to have my own airplanes. Well, at least one. I mean, I, I, I never thought I'd have two. Two is a bonus, right? But, but my, my point is that uh, when you focus on a goal and you make that goal like, like, like you, you dedicate yourself. Number three, nine or six, Mike Charlie, contact Minneapolis Center, one one nine or point four. When you dedicate yourself. Nine or point four. Have a good day, three nine or six, Mike Charlie. To to that to your goals and aspirations and the things that you really want, like passions and things like that. It's amazing how somehow, some way, you navigate towards them. And that's what happened in my life because I had this vision. I basically circumnavigated my life around this vision of me being able to have airplanes and when I did get the airplanes then again what I did was I incorporated all of my businesses and everything that I do financially into flying so that way I can take as much advantage as I can with expensing and, and justifying the expenses of the uh, use of, of usage for the airplanes so that's what's great about it so yeah, it, it definitely uh, uh, it has definitely made a significant impact in our lives. I feel very, I guess, proud that Switch I can fuel tank. take this passion of mine and share it with him and and maybe Isabel, maybe she'll learn how to fly one day. I'm not, I don't know, you know. So that that's what's really cool about this is that I can share these passions with uh, with my young ones and hopefully. At least Central one of them information, Air Met will uh, uh, take on this uh, challenge. And if they do, then, you know, I, I'll just pass on my airplanes. But it's like I tell him, you have to work and you have to sacrifice. Flying is the fun part. you got to study, you got to be dedicated, and you got to be responsible. Because there's a lot of things to learn. When it comes to uh, avi aviation. But yeah, I, I can't wait to get the shop and everything going so that I can get back into the swing of things. Right now, I've actually paused the uh, the website. I'm not selling any merchandise because all of my printing equipment is standing by. So uh, I can get this workshop done so I can transfer everything over here. Then I can start making merchandise again. You know, I, I'm from Jacksonville, so... Uh, it's a little different style of flying in the East Coast than it is in the West Coast. Let's think about it. Right now in Denver, the altitude, like right now, I'm, I'm uh, at 8,000 feet. By the time we get to Denver, the terrain here is sloping upwards. By the time we get to Denver, we're only going to be about 2,000 feet off the ground. So, yeah, that ground is creeping up on you. It's a bummer, man. It's a bummer that uh, the Saratoga is not ready yet. I like flying that Saratoga, man. It's pretty fun. 
Don't get me wrong, this Cherokee 6 is really good too. But that Saratoga, when you travel long distances, boy, it makes a world of difference. It'll shave about two hours off your flight. The art of flying an airplane is not just about controlling a machine in the sky. It's about gaining an entirely different perspective of the world. As pilots take to the skies in their own aircraft, they experience a unique vantage point that offers a renewed understanding of the world below. This newfound appreciation for the world around us can transform the way we perceive our surroundings and the challenges we face. Owning an airplane can be a rewarding and fulfilling experience as it allows you to explore the world from a unique perspective, gain new skills, and potentially turn it into a profitable venture by flying for business purposes, or even go a step further by becoming a commercial pilot. To me, the feeling of being able to fly my own airplane is surreal and it feels like a dream every time I'm behind the controls. If you're an aviation enthusiast like me, then make sure you like, subscribe, and leave a comment so that we can interact. Until next time, take care, stay safe, and have a great day, my friends.